So we are back in the white room, in the real white room. Which is a virtual white room, of course. And uh, I'm very happy to say hello to Maria. Maria, are you Good there? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm happy to welcome Harald Redma. Harald, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Today we're going to speak about lobbying for theater and a lot of money, money talk and art, of course, theater art. So, this is just to set the mood, of course, summer is over, autumn is beginning. I feel like in the beginning of March, when we when we first opened this this podcast and uh, we had the the pandemic rolling, and now we're back with the yeah with the numbers of the infections going up, and uh, uh, society and uh, policymakers reacting to it, and kind of wondering what is going to happen in autumn and winter, and. Yeah, we developed a lot of interesting things during the summer. Now we have to start improvising again. <laughs> and um, yeah, and somehow yeah. come safely through winter uh, and uh, keep on working. And this is also part of it. This is a, a pandemic podcast, of course, because we're not sitting together. It is uh, our privilege with the internet to be able to speak to each other with through technology and um, also in these moments i like to yeah i like to highlight the need for communication for dialogue for conversation about the topics that concern us as um, as performers and artists yeah this is this podcast <laughs> hi mariah i say hello to you in amsterdam true very true <laughs> and actually amsterdam i is uh, is quite feeling like spring today even though i know it's really? autumn but i was outside and it's very soft and beautiful sunny that's great here is a, mm. here it is gray and cold but wow. in Münster it's okay actually uh i'm i'm we are missing real winters anyway like all the last years uh, we hardly had any snow it was quite warm so well Exactly. Uh, I'm more missing the the cold rather than mm -hmm. summer at the moment. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens during December and January. Yeah, we should hope for okay. a, for a wet autumn and a wet winter with a lot of rain. But um, I, so. <laughs> I didn't say wet. I said talked about <laughs> snow. <laughs> yeah, I don't get the the wet thing either, Simon. What are you wishing for? Yeah, I'm wishing for water coming down to 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 flush the one of the uh, driest years in yeah. well that's right yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you know it's not corona is coming again and also the climate is spinning around like crazy and so a lot of things going on so can we have a little corona update from you how is it in amsterdam um well amsterdam uh, is like the rest of holland uh, in a in a panic at least uh, uh, the government is uh, has taken stronger measures. We are in a partial lockdown since yesterday. And one of the most striking measures, I thought, was that there shall be no serving and buying of alcohol after seven. Mm. In all, only in Amsterdam? Allowed... Only in Amsterdam? No, no. Or... This is a national measure. A national measure. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I thought that was an interesting uh, uh, twist because the parliament did not want to go with, a, uh, how do you call this, an evening clock that you can't go outside anymore. So mm -hmm. they chose for an alcohol clock <laughs> and uh, and thought this would curb mm. the dangerous uh, uh, energies of the night. Mm. Mm. So <coughs> how, how is it in Münster? And Münster at the moment is well, more or less free, as you say. We are, you know that um, 
Definitely. You know, Simon, that uh, we have very different rulings uh, through whole Germany, uh, very different restrictions, mm. not like in the Netherlands at the moment. And everybody fears, of course, that um, we're going to suffer from another lockdown that, like we had in, where was it, April, March, April. Mm -hmm. My personal hope is that uh, the experiences we made during that time, we can use now to get along with it a little better. Well, I just looked it up yesterday. Like um, uh, we had in Münster, exactly in Münster, kind of 13 dead people uh, dying because of Corona, but they all happened until the middle of April, and after that, mm. the, there's nobody, nobody else who uh, died because of Corona. So it gives me a little bit of. I don't say relief. Well, it's a kind of relief, which I feel just reading this. And so hoping that we all get along with it, as I said, quite well. Yep. So. Yes. In, our, in my town, in Schwerte, yes, it's, it's true. In Germany, we are very, uh, we have very different structures because of our federal state. So my mm -hmm. town, yeah. actually, it belongs to a smaller smaller unit of uh, of uh, commu communal organization and in this unit mm -hmm. we have reached a kind of a limit of of persons uh, of uh, infections so we are going into some new measures uh, which uh -huh. are happening right now like that the parties private parties are uh, limited to 25 persons so you reach uh, more than 50 per 100,000 yeah, yeah. at the moment. Said okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Germany, we said that if in some of these communal uh, units uh, the rising of infections uh, goes mm -hmm. over 50 per 100,000 people, mm -hmm. uh, then we will then we then we have to take locally some measures. And uh, so they're now yeah they're giving it out mm -hmm. now, and in this now it's also of uh, it's it's like in it's like in in March and April because now it's all also holidays like school holidays uh, autumn mm -hmm. holidays, mm -hmm. and we have we are having a, a, a program for children for circus and we were stressed out because we didn't know if we could do but, and in the end nobody can give you really an answer you have to think for yourself and uh, think what is safe so. There are a lot of regulations also that I think that uh, don't really make sense, uh, but other things that are very simple and make sense, like the masks. And I think we have to get used to more operating more with the masks uh, because I'm also... Mm -hmm. Next week we're planning a concert inside in a big, big hall, um, like a theater, actually theater performance and concert at the same time. And I, we will have to think how to manage of course the distance will be big and also we will maybe have yeah we will try to to ventilate the room mm. but you have to now be more aware of of that the people actually maybe they should just wear the mask also when they watch the performance why not because oh, it's, yeah. it's just um, we will see how that works That's what's yeah. striking me that in in, uh, in Holland the experts themselves are saying well we are we are driving blind here We really don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're taking measures because we feel we need to take some measures. Yeah. And that will mm -hmm. uh, satisfy uh, this feeling of we need to do something. And uh, especially on the point of the masks uh, in Holland, they were really not convinced at all about the masks. <laughs> they say there's no uh, studies that show that it had any kind of sense, uh, yeah. ventilation, Some say it's more important, or mm. some say distance is more important. But the the mask is, of course, a very visual, very almost performative uh, <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> you you make visible that you, and I guess that that uh, makes a lot of people feel better. Yeah, I mean, there's other measures like like put this plexiglass or plastic glass between people inside, but. Uh, it's it's this is one of the measures which I really f find funny because the if it's like if you smoke the smoke goes around these if you stay yeah. long enough so the plex mm -hmm. this glass makes sense in a supermarket when you pass quickly so that you don't spit to each other but but this but it's difficult and uh, but what we really <laughs> fear is that the 
uh, the relief we already have, uh, let's say, the performances are possible. Uh, for instance, we could make the festival, which I talked about to you, Simon, uh, I think the, the last time. No, you, you were part of the festival, of course, in Dortmund not yeah. very long ago. Uh, we were very happy that we could do that. So we all fear now that it will change again and that uh, everything else will be cut down completely. Like, so a couple of performances uh, in the last weeks and I was really, really happy to, to have this experience again and everybody uh, f- uh, felt really quite as a relief. Okay, now it's going on again. And, uh, mm-hmm. um, and uh, well, that would be really very hard for everybody, also for the theatres and for, for all the performers uh, again to be confronted with a much more restricted, uh, much yeah. more restricted thing. I would just say that it was the Favoriten Festival, which uh, we made also a podcast about, mm. it, which is the last episode. We just got back, cut back to 30 uh, people in public spaces, including uh, uh, the theaters. And uh, no exceptions anymore. So before yesterday, some theaters had uh, exceptions if they were big enough to house people with one and a half meters distance mm-hmm. at all times and seat people with that distance. And that is now also uh, uh, taken out. So every theater is, is, has a maximum of 30. 30. Uh, 30 uh, oh, wow, that's zero. not very many. Yeah. It's, it's impossible to operate on that, uh, yeah, actually, on those numbers. You mm-hmm. can't. Mm-hmm. No, that's what I meant to uh, that, that is the big danger at the moment. So today we have come back to the virtual space um, to talk with mm-hmm. an old friend of, of, of us, of Studio 7 actually. Uh, coming back also for my director Christoph Falke, going back years and years. And um, I wanted very much to speak with you, Harald, because, yeah, of to unwrap a little bit of the of the history of what you were doing in uh, in recent years in, in, in our part of Germany, in North Rhine-Westphalia, and uh, the genesis of what could be called um, our lobby organization, <laughs> mm. I like to call it, and uh, also about um, yeah cultural policy and, yeah, why not? Lobbying for theater, lobbying for independent theater. Beautiful. So, so welcome, Harald, uh, Harald Redmer, to the White Room, and uh, I think... Um, <laughs> I'm just letting. Maybe you can introduce yourself uh, more or less. What, do, what what do you do and where you where do you live? I live in Münster, um, and well, um, what I was doing because uh, you know that I um, I'm retired uh, at the moment, which is quite an unusual feeling for me because uh, I left the uh, uh, so-called Landesbüro freie darstellende künste that is the, the lobby organization yeah i uh, translated and, and i translated it please do yes Re- regional association for independent performing arts aha okay well, sounds sounds impressing for good not, we will not not for one of those <laughs> <laughs> well for amsterdam <laughs> so i left it uh, uh, the, the 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 bureau um, the office End of June, I was the leader of the office and um, I worked there for about seven years, which was very exciting for me because it was a complete new field of work, a new area um, to put my engagement in. And uh, the reason why I uh, I think was getting the job, why I got employed was because I am part of the independent scene the independent theater scene since uh, 35 years at least. Uh, and uh, so I could use a lot of experience which I had uh, in for my work in this, uh, uh, how do you call it, regional office? Association. Associate. Landesbüro sounds nicer to me anyway. Landesbüro. But it uh, doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> so and that is, and uh, for me it was a very... Um, Yes, I could also say quite successful work uh, because it was both uh, um, a political work, a um, lot of context to all different political and cultural organizations, also um, in the whole of Germany, uh, so a bit above the, um, the regional 
concentration or however you call it and uh, on this the second very important uh, task was to the help to help the the artists to get along because all of them are independent you know how difficult it is uh, especially in these days and these weeks and months but uh, generally it is not uh, very easy to survive as a freelance artist mm. so there was mm. the two parts but one part making politics on the other part helping the people um, which try to make good art and uh, get along with it yeah i think we should unwrap it uh, slowly this uh, how this feels of 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 action that you had but did you always dream of becoming the head of the our lobby organization no i never dreamed of it <laughs> <laughs> i was uh, most of the times of my life all the time uh, sitting on the other side of the table so i was uh, um, making applications for uh, new projects and uh, being involved in different uh, a lot of international projects also you mentioned the audience theater i think and that was in the very early years um, in my own artistic work and uh, have a very strong connection to a group in uh, in bonn in germany in northern westphalia the finch ensemble for a lot of years so Mm. Um, I, I was never really dreaming of that, and uh, it came, how I say, out of nowhere. That people asked me, um, "Would you like to do it?" And uh, then they had a good talk, and I, in my, you know, suddenly I could imagine to do it. But uh, before that, then, <laughs> dreaming not at all. And uh, right now, I'm quite happy also to leave it because it was <laughs> a good time. But now I feel, although I'm retired, uh, it is kind of a um, a, a new period and uh, something new is coming up so I don't feel like uh, really being retired yeah yeah you're in a podcast now that's something new also yeah <laughs> so uh, now, uh, yeah? I did podcasts before but ah. uh, uh, this is a special one yeah thanks I'm glad um, so you mentioned that before you were sitting on the other side of the table, on the table mm -hmm. that we are all sitting in, uh, on this in this chair. And how was it there to be there? And what were the difficulties that you faced uh, as a freelance artist? And what did you take, like as as expertise or input into your new job as the head of the organization of the association? I mean, the most the biggest problem is to um, organize some kind of continuous working if you are a freelanced freelancer uh, because we all depended on uh, pro what we call project subsidies project money and that is uh, usually just limited for a certain um, uh, time so let's say maybe half a year if you're lucky but usually you manage more or less to uh, get the um, subsidies for half a year and uh, then you take yourself a question what what can I, what what is following up and that is the, mm -hmm. the problem is not being able really to good uh, constant plans continuous plans and have a reliable um, um, how I say a reliable substance for your work And that is what I know very, knew very well, and which, which uh, it changed a bit in, in Germany and especially in Northern Westphalia. But there's still a lot to do to guarantee more like a like a constant like a biography for the people. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful that you use the word biography there, because I think that's very uh, uh, core point. That it's not mm. only about the money, but it's about your artistic biography. Yeah, that you can keep yeah. it, uh, keep it growing. Yeah, it is interesting to ask what is the why do people become a, a choose this way of uh, of organizing themselves or actually not organizing themselves? And uh, and I've recently also been asking myself. So, is it uh, is it To be independent. You mean what? What? Uh, what do you mean? The way to organize. Oh, why do you choose as an artist yes. to be an independent artist? Ah, yeah. Right. What is? What is yeah. behind? Why that? the hell? Uh, My God. Why? Why? <laughs> Are you <laughs> stupid or what? <laughs> yeah. I, I think just wondered if you have any thoughts on that. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just yeah. No. Anyway, what, what my what the thing is? What is the alternative? Uh, 
um, on the other side, uh, the, the only chance, uh, let's say, let's talk about theater people, which uh, mm-hmm. the part which I know best, um, the alternative would be to go uh, to the state theaters like Stadttheater or Landestheater or whatever, and um, simply people don't want to work there. They, they don't they don't want, don't want to work in a, a clear hierarchy of um, a state theater and uh, simply like the idea to... Um, do their own projects, uh, be independent in their work. And it's, I think the most important thing is that people know from the beginning when they start thinking about a biography, uh, that they know it, that this is the part of the game, so to say, that they uh, cannot expect um, to live uh, let's say a normal, secure life once you've decided to become uh, an, uh, an artist, an actor, or a director, whatever. You will always be uh, have uh, get, have to get along with a clear independence. That is, on one part, is is great because oh, if if you're lucky, you can really work quite freely. And on the other side, you have the insecurity of uh, the economic is, uh, insecurity. That's it. And the alternative is not. So, I mean, it, um, the conditions um, under which. Um, the colleagues' uh, work in the state theatres have become uh, worse and worse also. So that's, that's not so. It's not a, not, no reason to dream yeah, of being in the state theatre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Harald, have, uh, Harald for, for you for you in your uh, professional history, was there this moment where you said, uh, now I become an independent artist or now yeah. or a re- refusal to go into this other direction of the state mm-hmm. theater and when was it and uh, why what what happened i started as an independent um, um, artist from the very beginning but uh, the main the the, 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 the point uh, as i said the turning point was um, uh, the chance to establish this theater in in Münster, the Pumpenhaus, which is quite famous, uh, and, and the Pumpenhaus was part of uh, the first generation of Pumpenhaus. We founded it, um, and it was our theater, and that was uh, the main point. The main point. Was, okay, this is that's a great chance, and we got well, we got some funding for that, for building the house, and also for our work. And that was, I think, the in the beginning the. Uh, the most important thing to have, let's say, an artistic home. We were quite lucky at that time. and mm-hmm. uh, the, It was different to the situation right now in most of the other um, theaters. We talked about structures before because, uh, uh, yeah, in, uh, actually, there are not very many uh, theaters, free theaters, which are still be, uh, being run by... Uh, community. I'm just thinking about if there's only one. Most of them have uh, have changed to uh, well, a classic leader uh, leadership to what, mm-hmm. what kind of copying um, the structure of uh, the normal theaters. Mm. Although they do different things and have other programming, but uh, the internal um, uh, structure is quite similar to the normal to the state theaters. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, they have a leader, and uh, sometimes the leader, well, they they stay there for fifteen, twenty years, which is quite unbelievable. But sometimes, although I like them and I, uh, I accept their work a lot, but uh, I would uh, appreciate um, more changes also in leadership in the, especially in the free. In the free mm-hmm. scene, in the, that is uh, completely different to um, the change of leaderships in the state theaters. Mm. There, the, yeah. the, the leaders change a lot, uh, yeah. much quicker, which is uh, quite. <laughs> uh-huh. It's not really. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's really yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's maybe oh, they, also oh, because now, uh, now I can say it because uh, I'm not part of the Landes <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Exactly. <laughs> You can't well, say but everything. It, it, it makes sense also <laughs> if you have uh, built your little kingdom, then it may be quite scary to, uh, you know, to, to leave that little mm. kingdom. Yeah. So we started as a community at that time. We were uh-huh. uh, in the beginning 11 people running the theater. And, that, uh, and then after years and years, and we also changed to a just normal leadership. And uh, mm-hmm. in the end, it was... Uh, 
Uh, we were not really thrown out, but uh, the, the whole structure <laughs> changed. The whole structure, well, we, although we were afraid of it, it was not self-understood not to be thrown out, but uh, yeah. um, the, the, the municipality and some people in the, in, uh, uh, in the, uh, in the municipality, they, uh, they, well, they accepted uh, our work a lot. And so uh, in the end, we could continue professional um, independent uh, work for ourselves, but uh, the leadership of the house changed completely after, well, 12 years, something like that, or 10, 12 years. Yeah. Mm. Then there, there, was, there, there was, was the revolution and then Napoleon came. No, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, uh, yeah. no, but, sorry, Simon, uh, you, you mentioned that the city had, the municipality had some uh, say in that or some pressure. Yeah, of course, they get money. More. Yeah. The, those who give money, they always have something to say. That it's, it's, mm. <laughs> it's every, yeah, yeah, but, and that is uh, the, the, also the municipality of Münster is quite, <laughs> how you say, uh, cultural friendly and also quite friendly to the, especially to the independent scene. But uh, mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I would still say that um, mm. they, they they like it a lot. But uh, of course, once you have you give money, you have an eye on it and uh, say, oh, what are they yeah. doing there? Mm. Yeah. yeah, and they wanted more uh, clarity to whom they are speaking, maybe yeah. uh, more... Uh... It, it, it was also part of our own weakness, but because uh, uh, the, this original group of uh, 11, well, after in the end we were nine left, and these nine uh, couldn't agree on a clear... Um, common programming that was a, mm -hmm. a weak point of ours and we were not really very well in doing how I say to solving conflicts which is uh, of course a, a general problem if you yeah. uh, work as an ensemble and uh, so some, uh, sometimes you have to face uh, uh, clear problems which are not unusual problems but you have to face them and uh, try to find clever ways to solve it and uh, find professional ways to solve it. And about that, we started thinking too late mm. at that mm. time. Yeah. But that's long, long ago. Everything worked out fine. So uh, I personally, um, I, for me, it was also quite good to, uh, to have this change in my personal career But well, one thing is important. You ask, well, why do, does somebody um, uh, decide to become an independent uh, mm -hmm. freelancer? Um, you have from the very beginning um, be very, very clear about what are your possibilities, what is your the potential of what you could do, which is still related to the to the work, to the artistic work. So mm -hmm. I decided quite early to see how can I use it for. Um, for, for working in uh, in teaching, so uh, let I uh, started that uh, quite early. So as a how we say as a, a second stand uh, for getting for earning money second and leg. Uh, what mm. second second leg, yeah, and what uh, maybe the third leg uh, was that uh, from a certain point is working for in film business, which I found. Um, Very, very interesting, although the, the, the film business in itself, not really the, the results of it, I have to admit, but to mm -hmm. work in and being um, there in a complete different field of work as a, as a theater artist. I like that. That doesn't go for everybody, but to be very clear, what can I do else apart from, let's say, the basic um, work the basic idea of what, of my bi biography and that helped me a lot this uh, independent being independent it's not only maybe an artistic uh, uh, decision uh, of, of or an aesthetic decision but it's also some kind of a need to find even if it's with if it's accompanied with conflicts or if it does not work or yeah. but to, mm. to, to to be able to kind of um, Create your own structure, no, or to to um, um, to try to create and to fail and to improve your own structure and your and mm -hmm. and to experiment with hierarchy and yeah. to uh, yeah to to work on this. So some people maybe they <laughs> just need to also work on this, and other people maybe they. And some people who started to do that maybe later say, "No, I'm I'm fine. I would I, I'm now I'm going to work in a 
set structure <laughs> so i don't care about this anymore but mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, some people feel more comfortable in this and some people need to always yeah to create their own structure their own hierarchy to question also hierarchy to question this uh, yeah. i think this is also a big issue today and maybe also in these days the young artists that also i saw now at the mm -hmm. favoriten mm -hmm. festival and mm -hmm. all this new generation yeah which I'm also still a part of somehow, but I'm getting older also. <laughs> no. uh, they, I think they also again and again and trying to, to question this and to form ensembles and groups and, um, but trying to understand more, maybe how do you, from all these new studies that are coming on, no? the, the, the uh, studies on, on, uh, on racism or on uh, gender, uh, studies on communication, then mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. from a theoretical point of view, how, how should we, how can we communicate, how can we make a discourse uh, which is, a, or a flat hierarchy. But for that you have to be quite clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you have to be clever really <laughs> to understand because I agree absolutely there are much many more different impacts on all uh, different uh, there's the, the big the general discussion about yeah, how to communicate how to involve uh, uh, different um, different groups uh, how to uh, um, be clear in uh, against racism uh, um, all the discussion about general diversity of uh, of intercultural work uh, and so on that um, has become a lot more so the big field of what you can simply th have to think about and be clear about has become a lot bigger so and that have to you have to consider that being an artist um, it has also to do well uh, with we talk a lot about the performing artists uh, which is uh, a lot different to let's say uh, the understanding of an actor so for me mm -hmm. a performing artist has to be quite clear about all of that that he's as a yeah in his, with his biography as a person as an individual part of the society in which he or she lives in that uh, is for me it, it, it needs a, a, a lot higher standard of uh, of understanding um, oneself of self consciousness about it's at, at another professional level uh, this sometimes i found not simply not good enough if i talk to especially the younger ones um, some of them do big steps forward but some of them are simply um, not not thinking enough about especially this this um, demand you cannot simply say that uh, at least not as a performing artist um, well i just do my own work and i'm happy with that that is something i react react a lot against because it's that that's um, that's not true but you see this in the young in the young performers a lot that they say i just do my work and okay the, I don't care about the rest. Well, it depends. Some of them are very clear about it and find the very clear um, artistic level and uh, yeah, clearness in what they do, and some not. So that's quite yeah, it's quite mm. quite normal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, we talked also, about the stipend, the stipendium. Sorry about the stipendium, and what is needed for getting the stipendium is just uh, a page, one page of. <laughs> just a simple page in which you explain what you would like to work on what, what are your what your next uh artistic step might be uh, kind of a small concept yeah and uh, i did a lot of uh, uh i say um, um work with uh, well um yeah, but, uh, sorry, I, I missed the word. Uh, coaching, it, coaching, uh, coaching, uh, coaching, coaching for mm -hmm. for for um, these um, for this stipendium program, and uh, a lot of them simply can't do it. They they mm -hmm. they don't manage. They don't manage to mm -hmm. just fulfill one page of uh, explaining their work, and that uh, mm. worries me a bit. That is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that. I also think uh, you know I have uh, cousins or uh, nieces, I should say. They are. This, uh, 16 and 18 years old and they are extremely um, uh, full of ideals idealistic 
Well, it's okay. Uh, but they are very young, and uh, yeah. and I I also feel, uh, uh, you know, these young people they uh, they are of course our hope, <laughs> cannot deny yeah, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they need a lot of time to become smart. And I think, uh, you know, the way that you become smart is to work. Mm. There's no other way. Okay. You cannot yeah. demand yeah. someone to be smart. You have to <laughs> uh, create an environment <laughs> that they can work and figure it out. As as Christoph uh, Falke yeah, said, the wonderful thing uh, 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 some time ago. He said, "We are reinventing the wheel because we were working on uh, with with some question of the unknown and how to embrace mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. We are reinventing the wheel, and it's great." <laughs> And and I thought that was really really beautiful mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you have to find out for yourself. You cannot learn from from someone else. You cannot uh, you know wish it to be so. You can only work. And I think that is something that has been uh, that is really difficult for young ones uh, and old ones, everyone, to have enough work to learn because we I, are all stupid. I, <laughs> I agree. I agree absolutely. Uh, but 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 I demand let's say but i think it's mm -hmm. necessary that you simply know about it and know about the process mm -hmm. that yeah that, and uh, wish to i need <laughs> and wish to learn i need to and that yeah. that is uh that's the most yeah. important thing and that you it, are able just uh, maybe just to um wants to to write about it well this is my personal uh yes. situation that is that, that's not very much more than just mm -hmm. like, like okay up, then reinventing the wheel is a nice word i agree absolutely that's yeah, good. <laughs> there's a, there's one more thing that I uh, would like to uh, add to this is that in Holstebro in the Odin Theater they have mm -hmm. now a group that's called Icarus, and mm -hmm. this is a group full of young actors, uh, mm -hmm. and the only thing that they put their energy in is performing. They do great. the work. Mm -hmm. It's great. And mm. actually, you know, they're also required to work on their solo performances, but to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, they mainly work. Mm -hmm. And um, so you and mean I, like I they perform? To, they perform here and there perform, in the school they on the street. They make costumes. On... They run around. They teach. <laughs> they they do like their schedule yeah, is that's... like insane. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was always a little like, ha! Huh, but you know, there's so much more uh, uh, to you know becoming an artist. You need to. And then some part of me started to realize, wow, for those that have that kind of energy now. That don't mm. want to sit and write. It's mm. great, <laughs> and you know, in three years, when they have like <laughs> get maybe a little tired of all this running, suddenly there will be a moment, and then when they start to write, they will write or think or from such a different place. So it made me understand that this, uh, for those okay. that are in that moment. It's so good to <laughs> to mm -hmm. have a, a mm -hmm. and I think it's it's uh, sometimes required maybe uh, a lot to always explain yourself to always come up with these clever things and mm. I I love clever things so don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. How long um, are they allowed to stay in at the Odin? For the work, I th for this working group period. Uh, is developing <clears throat> into a really stable group, and I think the mm. there is no time limit at the moment. Oh, great! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of critiques. You could also uh, discuss about it, like uh, the financial part, and but you know, just <coughs> the point of <clears throat> having mm -hmm. a place where you can throw yourself with all your energy into the work. <laughs> mm. It's uh, it's very beautiful, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was your work in the in the association, the regional association for independent performing arts? Well, the, the word lobbying is quite a good word uh, for that. What I've been doing, uh, a lot of um, cultural connections to politicians, to other pe other people who are uh, worker who work in this area, other associations, and. Um, organization so that is something which uh, i found new for myself uh, because i'm an artist from, from from my background is an artistic background but doing this kind of lobbying um, although it's quite a 
um, it's not really a good word because we all we we think of uh, lobbying for for chemical industries or something like that in the, in the European Parliament or wherever. But for lobbying for cultural reasons, I found very important, very mind opening also because we meet a lot of very interested interesting and interested people both of it mm. and um through the last years while well, i've been working there for seven years in this association of uh, uh, for independent performing artists in this uh, as a ceo as you say um i found a quite an interesting change of um um of of uh uh, understanding how the independent scene works, what is what their needs are, uh, also that it is necessary to give more money. And uh, we were the funding for the independent scene, especially in Northern Westphalia, but also I think throughout whole Germany has become a lot better. There are still a, uh, still a lot to do, but uh, through these five to seven years, I would say uh, there's a a lot more understanding for the independent uh, performing arts scene um, than before. Of course, this is uh, the end of a long uh, history. So we the, 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 the office started in, I think, 1985, something like that. At that, that time, it was more uh, an association for, okay, we meet and uh, see others who do the same thing. It had, didn't have so much to do with lobbying in that sense, mm. which I was talking about. It was more like establishing kind of common meeting point. But um, that has changed. It has changed a lot now. And the festival really, was the, you had the... the, there and was the festival was, uh, let's, it goes in the same direction. We still do the festival, but the festival, of course, is important uh, okay, as a meeting point for the scene. But I think for the, for the lobbying, for the for the independent uh, theater, it is not so important anymore, especially in our festival, because it is an important festival. But uh, at the uh, same time, we have twenty or twenty five different festivals, uh, independent festivals uh, in North Rhine Westphalia only. So that's only one part of it. Uh, uh, the, the the lobby work in um, in um, in the ministry and with the other organizations. Um, functions right now on a different level mm. so this association has its roots uh, t uh, in uh, 1985 uh, as mm -hmm. a group of artists who organized themselves in some way mm -hmm. and then uh, you uh, went in uh, in, w in which year and how was this how did you come into being a I mean st st uh, becoming a yeah the, the chief of this organization of this, what, well, of, as I said, just beginning? seven years ago, when was it, uh, 2013, I was asked uh, if, no, a friend of mine, uh, he said, well, there is this, uh, um, uh, this, um, this offer um, uh, that, uh, that would be maybe interesting for you to, um, to do this job. Um, I never thought of it, that it would be something fitting for me. Um, but um, I read through the proposition uh, of um, this association that, okay, maybe that fits quite well to what I know. And then, well, we will see how long I will stand it. In the beginning, I thought, well, I shall do it for two years and maybe three, and then uh, I'd go back again to my artistic work. But uh, I found it interesting and yeah, as things go, then you know, um, get more and more interested, and uh, um, became more and more ambitious. That, but I was what I was uh, ambitious, really, to get to a point where I was uh, content with uh, what I was doing, mm. and that worked. Yeah, it needs some years. It, it needs more than two years. It needs at least five years, I would say, until you come to a point where everybody knows you, where uh, you you get mm. more and more clear about your what is possible and where your personal aiming is, aims are, uh, where you know the right people, and um, in which time where you can 
um, build your own strategy really to to get where you want to go. Well, one of the things which were not at all clear in the beginning uh, were to um, to to succeed in getting more possibilities for self-organization. That means uh, giving being resp feeling being responsible much more for um, for funding for groups and for uh, single artists that was impossible we just had a very low budget in the when I, when I started and ended up now at uh, something like 2.5 million uh, per year which now uh, the association um, uh, can give away and that's of course a matter of trust in the organization also a matter of trust in the people who work there it's not only me personally it's, we are a very good team but for uh, for that you need a bit of time you can't mm. say okay i want that because uh, you, you need as i say you need to make connections and um yeah and and then be a bit patient on that so so if i understand correctly you you basically one of the things you did as an association of independent artists is you set up your own culture funding system and mm -hmm. Yes, make yeah. the uh, the calls. You make the decisions. Who gets? You make the checks if uh, if it was spent in the right way. They are man. The, you are managing government's money, right? Yeah, it's, it isn't. It isn't administration work. Yes, it's yeah. One part. Yeah. One part of mm -hmm. what we are doing. The other part of what we're doing. We do a lot of. Um, uh, like uh, let's say a trade union does uh, to support uh, the colleagues to to give advice to uh, um, yeah do everything which is necessary that they get along uh, with what they do. In one part is that, and the other part is that's a service part of the association. The other part is the money part that we give away the money with our in our responsibility, and that also means that we try to. Um, establish fair uh, jury uh, um, mm -hmm. not, uh, like a commission things. yeah right yeah, so and that is not self understood i mean you have to get experience yeah. on that as well so yeah uh, and yeah, we I, mean, i feel that we are quite accepted with it at the moment yeah that's really interesting because it's one of the most crucial parts no and you have right. to fund yeah. how mm -hmm. to make the rules and the commission mm -hmm. uh, set up mm -hmm. also the people that right. are in there and yeah. can you tell a little bit on how that uh, grew and how it was received was there a lot of uh, dialogue with the field on how it should be organized or how did how did it happen like that yeah first of all um, we had to react again uh, a bit against the desires of the government because they wanted to have much more influence for that in the beginning. Yeah. So, wow, well, okay, now right. we give you more money and we want to, of course, now be part of it. Yeah. They are part of it, but just a little bit. So maybe maybe twenty percent is part that which is okay for me because of course they have their own expertise and uh, because they uh, are representing also, uh, well, they have knowledge, so to say, but 80% of uh, what is uh, um, needed for a good decision on how to give away uh, the project money um, is uh, done through us. And we uh, we ask the scene, we, we are an association, we ask our members, who do you think could be... Um, interesting, uh, engaged enough, uh, um, uh, has knowledge enough to do this kind of job. Uh, to be in the committee. A, to be in the committee. And uh, we all agree on that nobody uh, is part of the committee more than two times. So that's a, that's a rule, twice, and then uh, they have to be replaced. And that works quite mm. well so it's mm -hmm. a, it's difficult because you have to um, uh, be aware of so many different things like a geographical uh, 
uh, distribution, uh, age, uh, gender, of course, um, uh, uh, it's important if you, there, are, there are a dancer sitting or if it's a performing or um, another performer. Um, so that is... Uh, that is quite tricky at, at, at times, mm. really, to to have the right mixture. But in my impression, it works quite well. And and do you think that over the years, when you look back, then these committees have performed kind of in a steady uh, way, or were there sometimes like uh, years in which there was a lot of critique, or years? What do you mean by performed? Were... Oh, you mean if they uh, if they be uh, be accepted? Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah, but, like uh, I can imagine that when when a commission or committee doesn't function yeah, well, yeah, it it can give a bit of. A... I mean, the the thing, of course, is you have to deal a lot more with disappointments than with with lucky people because uh, exactly uh, on on each let's say um, successful um, application, you have three applications uh, which were not successful that is of okay, like the, the disappointment is so to say included the included in the whole process um, but I have the feeling everybody accepts that and we are mm. fighting very much uh, for more money and we succeed in it it used to be uh, a lot worse let's say five years ago then the relation was one to five for instance now the relation is one to three so everybody knows that i hope that everybody knows it <laughs> and so actually um you, we hardly ever mm. get the response that it is basically not okay what we are doing of course uh, after um after the uh, application, the new application round, and after after the, the decision, we got a lot of uh, the colleagues ask us why not, what, what did we do wrong? Uh, but that's okay. Uh, maybe uh, we kind of um, give a good feedback. And uh, as far as I remember, we hardly ever have. Uh, talk to people who are really deeply um, mistrusting us. Yeah, I, I don't have that feeling, but well, who knows? <laughs> we well, of course, we 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 will. Of course, we would like to have much more money, even. But well, I repeat myself, uh, it has become a lot better. And right, right, especially this year, uh, because you talked about the Corona. Uh, uh, circumstances uh, right at the moment there's a lot of money in the market so to say uh, for people who get we have so much extra funding so much uh, extra possibilities to uh, survive somehow uh, mm -hmm. if you're kind of clever and willing to do all these application stuff which is of course not not everybody is meant to do that uh, a lot of people as well are I don't know how to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to feel dependent on this kind of um, uh, support yeah. through the government. But if you agree on the rules, then right mm. in this year, in 2020, you can survive more or less quite mm -hmm. well. 21 mm -hmm. will be much more difficult. It, it actually brings a... a, a a little bit side subject but it is related you say some people don't want to mm -hmm. uh, live this way yeah? and i guess there is a there is a division there that goes through the independent scene that is actually really interesting that are mm -hmm. those that are able through their work to function in this system of project based um uh, interesting projects let's say yeah that every time propose something that catches the eye that uh, proposes a new thought or a new mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, and there are artists that have a much more stable way of working right. that are not yeah. actually thriving in that kind of uh, yeah well, that's an interesting point because uh, also that uh, changes slowly mm -hmm. but it starts changing that um, supporting much more a kind of continuity rather than just always the innovation, always the new stuff, always mm -hmm. uh, something like that. There, 
uh, we have different kinds of funding, not only in the Landesbüro, in the association there, but also throughout, I think, throughout whole Germany, uh, uh, that uh, more and more there's a tendency that people understand that we uh, it doesn't that it doesn't really make sense to support always new stuff and then you for instance show a performance three or five times and you throw it away because otherwise mm -hmm. you're not you don't get any um, any fresh money so to say so more supporting uh, individual work which um, uh, um, is is meant for a longer period so support somebody with a stipendium is that a right word in english yeah, yeah right yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. so okay um, okay you have to um uh, to find an idea and you get money for that for a, for one year or maybe for two years so that's something which um exists and which is uh, yeah getting stronger the idea is getting stronger mm. and also um we have new funding um uh, in northern Australia at least to give money for at least three years uh, with a clear basic amount of money not only for uh, for new projects so some for instance you get uh, say 200,000 um, uh, euros for three years and uh, you are obliged to at least show two new productions but not more so you you right. can yeah, you you can choose a little bit how you work and uh, establish more continuous work and follow that idea and that is it is a slow a, a slow change of understanding um how mm. um the work in the independent scene yeah happens what what they exactly. need yeah why is it so difficult uh, for the policy makers for the funders for the government to to uh, give money to fund uh, continuous work and um, <laughs> and not uh, not f only fund projects yeah uh, sometimes i think um, inventing new ideas for funding yeah also Mm, as a kind of, I say, uh, um, it's kind of a flagship for the institution. So we invent something and it also shows our ability um, f for uh, clever ideas. So, so it's rather, rather more the clever idea of the institution rather than the idea of the, of the artists themselves. So that, yeah. uh, that's on, on one, yeah, one yeah, thought yeah. in the back of my mind. But the other thing is that uh, people simply are used to it. And uh, we mm -hmm. have so much of um, administration rules with, which seem to um, demand this kind of habit rather than uh, for instance, it's com totally, completely uh, complicated, very complicated to uh, give you money uh, for more than a year, uh, just for something which lasts on for two years. But you have to see each year, say household, we say, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, each year um, for in itself and uh, make a clear um uh, uh, administration for that you count it and then you can uh, although also <laughs> although it's part of the whole work you have to um uh, pretend that you start something new in the next year mm -hmm. so that is really uh, completely crazy so uh, mm. in a way it is uh, there are habits uh yeah we, we are we, we try to work uh, on it very hard to change these administration rules but that is the most difficult thing uh, in, a, in in the government, really, because that's a, a matter of the Ministry of Finance, and that mm -hmm. is that is a complete different story. Mm -hmm. Is there also maybe a like um, it would seem here in Holland? There's definitely a, it it goes to the core of how arts funding is is argued for. You know, what are the arguments for? different types of art funding so the the more stable funding would be given to institutions that hold uh how they call it an important place in the infrastructure mm -hmm, of making mm -hmm. culture accessible 
and then this project funding should be uh, always temporary, right? They are mm -hmm. things that you do uh, as part of a program, programmation or mm -hmm. an extra. Actually, mm -hmm. I think they are they're seen as an extra thing. They're not your mm -hmm. daily running mm -hmm. as an organization. They're the extra thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, for independent we... artists, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, this logic does not really work. Mm -hmm. That it, the, it uh, doesn't fit the actual It situation. goes in the same direction as we talked about before, because what, uh, when I talk about um, supporting more continuous work, it also goes for uh, single groups, you know, also for sometimes even single artists. The mm -hmm. One thing we call in institutional uh, funding, that goes to institutions, but there are also, it's just a name for it, it is an um, administration thing, it also goes for... Um, uh, ensembles or uh, constantly working groups so they can also mm. get institu institutional funding or they were treated like an institution you could say right. and, uh, some of them have a yeah, more or less guaranteed money right now for six seven eight nine years which is which is quite something um and there of course is the the the, the pure or the original project money that uh, was the temporary temporarily given away money and there's something in between there's something in between that is it's a little bit like that and a little bit like that. We have uh, a new uh, funding since two years, which is called, uh, um, well, let's say, conceptual money. Uh, hmm. and that is, it's just a word for something, um, as I said, in between. It's not real money for an institution, but it is more money just like, okay, we give you money just for one project. So that is part of when I say we are in a the right way to mm -hmm. change the system more in the direction of um, of, of uh, more reliable uh, uh, money and um, possibilities, yes. And do you think it should go into the direction that actually, uh, let's say, like the famous uh, basic income that you cut the ideas of the project uh, funding mm -hmm. and all the big mm -hmm. concepts and you just say, okay, mm. from whatever criteria, you're an artist, you want to do something, here's your money, work. <laughs> well, it's interesting because right now the corona crisis we have in, in Northern Australia, this enormous um, funding, uh, the, the stipendium money, which were, it was completely new and out of nowhere, there were mm. one point, no, one, 105 million euros for 15,000 artists through uh, musicians uh, um, and a lot of performing artists. And that goes in this direction because they simply yeah. get money, they get anyway, just 7,000 uh, euros, but that's something anyway. So, and there actually there are no real restrictions. They had to write something like, like a, a small page of what they were thinking of what they could do. <laughs> kind of a, a yeah. rough. It, it's not not more than this. I never had uh, a funding a support like this in thirty five years of freelance uh, independent mm -hmm. uh, work. That yeah. is really, that is really uh, very interesting. And I made the proposition to uh, the administration. Um, let's have a good look on that and see what comes out of it. Because mm. we have fifteen thousand artists at least thinking mm -hmm. and t i think most of them take their work seriously and feel uh, a kind of uh, of course uh, yeah uh, that, that they have to uh, do something for it and let me see what comes out of it because mm -hmm. the biggest fear uh, well, they feel an obligation to, uh, okay we, we we got the money and of course then we um do something for it. The biggest fear of all the administrations and the politicians is that people get money for nothing. And I don't believe that. I don't, I believe that once you give yeah, them money and they have... Horrifying. The, yeah, yeah, it's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> money for <laughs> nothing. Money for nothing is impossible. Uh, yeah. and, and, and if that works out fine, and um, we would 
maybe see it uh, mm -hmm. in half a year or maybe just a year that um, I see, okay, what happened to all this uh, 7,000 uh, euros for each? It was an individual funding. Then uh, it might be the starting point of changing slowly the whole system because mm -hmm. uh, we, are, we are talking about the jungle of project funding of so many because yeah. it's so that i think it's and checking the same and everywhere and it's so much work yeah just yeah. To, to do all yeah. this application work and everybody's suffering from that yeah. also the administration by the way yeah and so maybe <laughs> maybe yeah yeah and maybe it's it's maybe no? yeah yeah maybe yeah, it's very expensive i mean if you get five thousand euros for uh, um, a project at least you have to spend five thousand euros on, for the administration Mm -hmm. Exactly, it's crazy oh, actually. Yeah. Eh? That's and there's the questionable crazy. ethics of of uh, deciding if a project is good before even any first work has right. been done yeah. in the yeah. studio, yeah. which is <laughs> which is questionable yeah. in the least. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it actually reminds so, me what you, what you say. Is, so I just had this uh, uh, um, memory of a, a friend of mine. She's a harpist, a harp harp player mm. from uh, mm. from Germany. Yeah, I think she's from Hanover. Uh -huh. She lives. Uh, she has a wonderful career here in Holland. She's a beautiful musician, and she knows a lot about the history, also the history of arts funding in uh, really? in Germany. And she yeah, was telling okay. about this period after the war, oh. where uh, Stockhausen and yeah. those oh. uh, generation got a ton yeah. of money yeah. to yeah. basically work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that this brought the whole renaissance in uh, composition, yeah. in composers, the, uh, a, a movement that could never have happened if they would have been project by project uh, um, right. yeah. taken yeah. on and, and because they were so uh, uh, let loose and, and they could develop a whole new area of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of artistic mm -hmm. thought. That's interesting, and yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, actually... The starting point of project money or given the, the, is uh, in the scene itself, because mm -hmm. the starting point was in let's say 1970 something like that, or maybe a little bit later, as a re reaction against the so-called establishment. Right? Mm -hmm. Said, okay, we want to have another freedom we want to get mm -hmm. uh, don't want to get uh, what would be stuck or just uh, in the, the on the theater side and state theater so we won't have free money and uh, so i think the first idea and the and the proposition uh, the, the for an idea like project money comes from the scene itself so if they give mm -hmm. us money and we do something for it and then we show you the result Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's yeah. what. Uh, yeah, and then when we show you that we can do uh, at least as well as good as they, maybe even better, and we have the better ideas. And we have, and I started like that. Yes, I'm quite sure. Yeah, and now we see the result is that uh, okay, they want to do something new all the time. Yes, yeah, good, <laughs> yeah. wonderful. Let's see, stay wonderful. flexible. Stay flexible. Yeah, stay flexible. <laughs> run, monkey, run. <laughs> I know that now, 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 okay, now we don't want to do new things anymore. Just give me money just to breathe and to maybe <laughs> just to look back for a moment and see what I've been doing already and uh. count and, 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 and maybe, maybe even uh, do it, uh, change it and do it in a better way or something like that or simply, simply play the same thing like a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Give me money for that. Yeah, I yeah. Don't worry about it. it's impossible because you said yeah. you wanted to do something new. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. But these this very uh, core arguments or, or mm. just uh, notions of how expensive the system is to run yes. and how yeah. impossible the, uh, the, the quality uh, argument has become actually to, to maintain is, mm. is really interesting because it. Uh, I think it is starting to show in many areas this same uh, uh, a problem of, of mm. social security, for instance, that one of the main arguments about basic income is not uh, an ethical argument. The main argument is it's much cheaper <laughs> because you can, cut, you can cut all the control systems yeah, yeah, yeah. that are now costing uh, us. <laughs> ah, the problem, but the problem is that in the administration, there 
are working so many people who don't do anything else mm -hmm. like that they all would get unemployed you have they to, would you get have basic to income <laughs> 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 that's a good idea <laughs> and they can start making art maybe mm. they Go can do something yeah. much better they, yeah. yeah yeah they maybe well, they sing that, in their choirs and they now they can do this all the time exactly. <laughs> i mean we we immediately touch on another topic around finances and work that that, that mm. has been going around mm. uh, very much last year here in holland mm. we have this rutger um oh what is his last name he's a he's a historian and he made international headlines last year because of his speech at the conference for the wealthy uh, in Davos, mm -hmm. where he brought this point of taxes. Like yeah. the only uh, feasible way to redistribute money and make uh, this break this wealth trap that we are in, that the 1% gets richer and the 99% yeah, yeah, get yeah, steadily yeah. poor, yeah. is taxes. This is the, the only... Uh, and why is no one talking about this? Because the whole yeah, conference right. yeah, was on yeah. philanthropy and uh, mm -hmm. economic mm -hmm. help and taxes was not, not on the no, table. No, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. And, and he um, uh, he's a big arguer for the basic income. And, um, and what one of the things that he pointed out is that a vast majority, well, maybe majority is a bit strong, but a huge amount of the jobs that is going on now are actually bullshit jobs, what he calls. I, I wanted... They're jobs. Yeah. Uh, Did you hear this term? Yeah, yeah, of course. We, I have to make a parenthesis, of course. The person who, who wrote a book about this, uh, about this topic, David Graeber, was an mm -hmm. anthropologist, uh, an anarchist mm -hmm. anthropologist, as he called himself, and he just died recently, very young. And this book, Bullshit Jobs, is in fact, mm. I didn't read it yet, but I read some excerpts, and it is mm. also the, it well. it yeah. is the book for these times because, because of a lot of nice distinctions, like the comparison from bullshit jobs to actual shit jobs. Bullshit jobs are jobs that are well-paid, and people say, it is not necessary. It could be even better the world without me and <laughs> without my job and uh, uh, versus the shit jobs, which are necessary jobs, like mm. we say in Germany, mm. systemrelevant, mm. which are paid but like shit. Paid. Mm. Now, yeah, yeah, right. now, Mariah, you can go on. So <laughs> give, give me, a good, give me an example for a bullshit job. Corporate lawyers, for instance, is a... Okay. You know? <laughs> there's a, yeah. there's a lot, yeah. especially in the administration systems, uh, systems organizing mm -hmm. and this uh, mm -hmm. kind of middle management, middle uh, ma middle uh, management. unending yeah. layers of, of control and... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's, it was in a vast array of modern uh, organization that is... Uh, mm. People could not really also say, okay, I know what my job is about... I think uh, I think things would not function without me. In in mm. as Simon said many times, they said, "Yeah, things will go <laughs> will go fine without my job." <laughs> mm. But somehow we have this, and this this is another problem that has been spotted uh, by many thinkers over this contemporary age that we will have at some point more people than we will have meaningful work, mm. 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 and somehow up until. Uh, the 50s or 60s, I think, they were also in the US very convinced that we were going straight to basic income. Mm. And actually, it was already passing a bill in the, and the, the Democrats stopped that bill from passing. It was, it was going to pass. In, in, in the USA? In the USA. Yeah. Mm, and okay. they said they stopped it because it was not high enough. They thought the basic income should be a oh, bit higher. Okay. Mm. And the thought was, we are we we don't have enough work that uh, that is meaningful. So we we have to switch from a work based economy to uh, to some other solution. And they, this was something mm. that mm. Uh, was occupying think, the minds a lot. I think that it's it's one part of I think uh, maybe even a little deeper criticism on the society or on the, um, how the, the society functions in the, which we live. And there's a lot of, uh, you, you, at the same time, a lot of um, thinking about uh, our growth mentality, 
that that the society uh, comes to 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 the edge of what is possible in terms of uh, relying or depending on growth all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean that's a um, that's a basic economical uh, word for but otherwise uh, our uh, societies wouldn't function. And that uh, that we come to a uh, to a critical point is obvious. Uh, uh, seeing um, how we. Um, uh, maybe, yeah, how we uh, care about our resources and uh, so that, uh, well, that's something for me. It belongs together. It is actually it's a very simple uh, criticism on um, the capitalistic world. How the capitalistic system is quite easy. I mean, uh, but at the same time, it's so difficult really to uh, to, mm. to to change it um, because it would really. Uh, need a bit a lot of international understanding well i'm not an economist but i don't know enough about it but but what i read about it how uh, the the whole financial system has become completely independent of uh, all national affairs about the national ruling so that is really frightening for me that uh, um that there's a, the one percent you were talking about is actually uh, it is absolutely not necessary that they belong to any nation or whatever you see yeah. with all this with Apple and Amazon or whatever it is uh, it's something uh, like fifty years nobody could even think about this kind of or even thirty years ago nobody could even think about this kind of um, movements which uh, are dominating. Uh, the world in which we are living so much. So, although I like Apple, yeah, I have an Apple here, but it's uh, uh, it's a uh, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, what what is interesting in the terms of uh, of also maybe something performative or theatrical is that these systems are so much uh, built on believing in the premises that they offer. Mm -hmm. So. I was. I have been many times so surprised about the power of this neoliberalism mm. to present itself as real reality, bare reality. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take off the bullshit of the beliefs, then you have neoliberalist realities mm. and economic realities, mm. and uh, and that is a, a very clever masking of itself. Uh, Mm. Of a basically a faith mm. system of faith, mm. a church, a, a religion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And their their costumes are, you know, the <laughs> props. <laughs> you mean uh, the tie, the, the tie, the ties and uh, the suits and the yeah. Okay. So I. Th so yeah, we learned a lot about um, about. Uh, we spoke a lot about funding and about the principle of funding and I hope that we that yeah we 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 will take more steps to the to the to this vision of of how could we call it um I like to call it a uh, practice based funding mm -hmm. and I really loved how it was said by one of you both like mm. here is money now work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think mm. that is also, especially for artists, it speaks to something that, that is so, uh, for many of us, so central to the life that there is an urge to work and that there's no more painful thing than not being able to work. It, right. it, uh, it digs very and, deep. It's not a holiday. And, uh, it's like being deprived of something that is uh, tied right. to your identity and mm -hmm. tied to your being in the world. Mm -hmm. And and what I also like very much that there's a, a kind of development at uh, the in the independent scene. I think not only in the performing arts, also uh, in the other independent scenes, um, the 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 self confidence and self consciousness about what people are doing and how important their work is for the society has become a lot more. Uh, hmm. Through the years, uh, through the last, let's say, ten years or whatever, um, that's, that's, that's something I believe in personally. That that is also a, a gain of the work um, 
that associations like we did and all the others uh, throughout Germany and internationally that the independent, the acceptance of independent work and the importance for um, the society has become a lot more. A lot, although uh, difficulties and although uh, it's it's hard to survive, uh, but uh, I feel this. Uh, um, yeah, as I said, this feeling for themselves for okay, this is what I want to do, um, and uh, I don't have either. I don't have to justify myself for it. Mm. Mm. I, I just just a little reaction on the. Uh, on a topic that we have not really touched yet, that is really the young, uh, the mm -hmm. young artist. Now that here, at least uh, uh, in Holland, um, those that are really early twenties, I mm -hmm. would say, or maybe in their in yeah in their twenties, mm -hmm. have an extremely difficult position. I'm starting to see. And they are starting to organize themselves and speak out a little more. But mm -hmm. they have been growing up in lean years here, where the mm -hmm. where even though the economy was quite good, the arts funding mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. not uh, reflected that at all, actually. No, that's a different... Uh, it used to be better in the Netherlands, right? Something like yeah. 10, 15 years ago, it used to be better. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's been... Mm -hmm steadily going down mm -hmm. and this generation uh now they are starting to speak out and the voice that that we are hearing mm -hmm. is actually saying quite impressive quite radical uh uh stuff that that goes to quite a deep human place about for instance not wishing to um subscribe to this genius idea they mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. uh, work as collectives. They rather work mm -hmm. um, not signing their name, for instance, and mm -hmm. not going for the uh, exceptional idea, but just saying, we just want to make... It's basically it's a little bit reflecting what we were saying just now. Mm -hmm. You know, We just want to make work. And please, uh, sending out this, this cry to you know the the establishment look mm -hmm. at what's happening in the small mm -hmm. places because mm -hmm. that's where mm -hmm. we are we are mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. in the not funded uh underground um places but we don't see that we are given this way out so you have to open mm -hmm. your uh site to us now and do you see the this this um um, collective work, uh, as you described it, or as a kind of a political statement, also. I see it reflected. Or is it just uh, something like the best way to survive? It's both. I I do it's believe both. it's both. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much. And but I do think that this practical way to survive uh, does ride on a on a deeper wave that mm -hmm. is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we have the same tendency in Germany as well at uh, doing uh, work in uh, corporations in collectives, yeah. or, or not, not collectives as we used to have in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the 70s and 80s. It's more, much more, I would say, flexible. Mm. Uh, yes, um, more like networks. Corporations. Yeah, right. It's a, a little bit different idea behind it, but. Uh, yeah. Actually, quite impressing sometimes, as I find yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. good. Yeah, it makes me think of, uh, you know, the whole open source uh, uh, work <laughs> work ethic that that have been developed uh, yeah. way mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that these kids, right. yeah. you know, they yeah. don't have so much this ownership uh, mm -hmm. uh, feeling or this this young. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They're more about sharing, and this maybe reflects their social media uh, mm -hmm. uh, growing up. Practice. Uh, there's mm. no privacy. There's privacy not valued. You don't have to own something right. to enjoy it. They right. don't yeah, yeah, buy yeah. music. They just share it. Mm. It's yeah. they stream it. completely yeah. different. Uh, that's interesting. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we see a, see a, a little bit of hope, don't we? That things Always. might change. Always okay, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I want to change yeah. the yeah. yeah. You said you said before you say now we were talking about this this explosion of funding in Germany. 
mm. in some way because of Corona. Then you said 2021 will be worse. Why yeah. do you think that? Well, because uh, it's all uh, landed money, so to say. Uh, and it is a, the, the, um, mm. I don't think that uh, the government, the state, can afford to uh, give so much, so much extra money through another year because it's really uh, they 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 do how I say they uh, do a lot of debt. Right. Debt, mm -hmm. it, they debt create debt. Right. Yeah. They create debt. Yes. Yeah. So, and uh, uh, for uh, especially the the cities, uh, the, the com as we said, the communities, the communes. I mean, uh, the muni municipality. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, they will uh, have um, a lot of loss by the, the taxes will go down and the, the income of the tax income will come down. So I don't think that, that they can afford uh, funding artistic, mm -hmm. free artistic work or all the cultural um, business. Um, as in uh, 2020, because everybody hopes that we'll get through this crisis and then we come back to a, a point where everybody gets along by him or herself uh, on his own. So uh, that's it. That's my impression. Mm. <laughs> and then, I w then maybe the last uh, thing. Um, I w now I'm wondering um, more on how should we as artists participate in the political dialogue or in the actually in the policy making because politicians are our representatives. Yeah, start should, in the should, municipality. Should we start. should we should we go? Should we take part? How should we take yeah. part? How should we talk to the politicians? Should we or should we be on the side and make our work or should we participate in the policies in the policy making? I think not everybody uh, is able to do political work, but what everybody is able is to articulate demands, needs, and to um, to connect to others, to do a, a good network, which is uh, focused on political aspects, starting in their municipality, just where they live, and uh, connect to people who do more or less the same thing, and then you know, try to find uh, the right politicians, which exist everywhere, uh, to um, to underline the needs and uh, and, and uh, the facts and what was. Uh, so it's uh, start from uh, everybody. Well, we we did some initiatives from uh, in uh, the through Landes Bureau in I think now ten or eleven different. Um, towns, uh, not only the big ones, but especially towns like Wuppertal or Bielefeld or whatever, uh, also in Münster, to uh, to support and uh, encourage them to organize more. Um, first of all, themselves, which is of course extra work. Nobody pays you for that usually, mm -hmm. but to uh, have simply a stronger voice in the local surrounding and that's a starting point and this is uh, then you can maybe of course you can uh, participate in a, in, a, in a political party if you like if you feel like that but it's not really it's not necessary I mean, you can do some some uh, find out through the through the times oh that might be interesting now to uh, to 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 join um, in whatever party well there, there are some who find uh, find it all of a sudden interesting like, okay it's not as bad as i thought mm -hmm. because <laughs> then you have commissions and you have uh, um, uh, mm -hmm. teamwork uh, special teams and um, so that that is not and it's not so difficult usually uh, if you f start there, I, it's of course difficult. We think, okay, uh, I mean, it, it would take a, some time to be to sit in a Buddhist talk, but no, but I, well, actually, this is the, the more boring side of it. The interesting thing is to to um, to do political work um, in, um, in in your personal location, in your, in, in, your, in the city you live in, mm -hmm. and that is it is. It's, Definitely, it's, it, it is not as complicated as you think. Mm. And uh, through the scene, everybody reacts 
first of all, reacts against it. Okay, that is not my business. I don't want to. But just spend a little bit time with it, and then find other others who can you could network with it, so that you can delegate things and uh, and work. So that is not, of course, depending um, on just single persons. But you 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 need company for that, of course. But that would would be my advice, and would be it's quite effective. Mm. Mm. Does it matter if you do that uh, organized officially or as a as a, um, loose networks? What what do you think should should it be like uh, un you, unions or? No, you should. The only thing which is necessary, you should give yourself a name for it. Just uh, you, you don't have to. Uh, establish a union or a sort of it you don't that is not necessary but uh, once you have kind of a stable community or team whatever then give yourself uh, uh, a local name so that everybody knows okay because usually the politicians are longing for that because the independent mm -hmm. scene the most problem is that it is spread out everywhere yeah. it is divided and, and uh, nobody really right. answers what what the hell is the free scene and and, and, uh, and that, that of course it's difficult uh, and the politicians like it where they say okay and they have a speaker maybe or maybe two or three speakers they accept everything as long as i know okay these are people are more or less responsible for the thing we always thought it is interesting and maybe even important but now we know who they are mm -hmm. and that is that, that that's I repeat myself that that is uh, easier than than you think, and then you have to find out the right people um, in the um, in the pol political scene, which we will I think find out, and then you're in the game. Yeah, but that's... you have to give yourself a name, yeah, something like <laughs> yeah. the Association for Freelance Artists, so whatever. But Tap dancers of Amsterdam North. For instance, yes. <laughs> that's yeah. nice. Very nice. Okay. That's a good start. Yeah. 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 Or even Artist like, yeah, like artistic, artistic tap dancers. Yeah. Now they made for for the people people that uh, are disappointed with the Green Party because the Green Party is uh, lacking, especially in some regions of Germany. They are lacking. They are yeah. lacking the. Yeah. Now I'm talking about climate change. They are lacking the 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 force uh, of. Um, changing really uh, the politics so some people say no green party no we organize without a party we make a list and it's called klima list no it's okay uh, you can do that so yeah, you can also thing. create an artist yeah. list yeah artist uh, whatever <laughs> uh, yeah so a huddle. yeah artist huddle artist huddle yeah <laughs> and that's that's why i yeah i think those were those were great uh, great great words so you can yeah Yeah, to, then, then, you can take it to other topics also, no? Yeah, then you organize a little conference and whatever, uh, a bit of uh, um, um, work, find a newspaper who supports it a little bit, something like that. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's easy. Go out, find some people, get yourself a name, and you're in the game. So yeah. we will end. Right. We will end. With That's that. a good. <laughs> <laughs> and I will end with that. That this podcast also has a name, the White Room, and it will continue. We will have more guests, and yeah, somehow it will continue. You can also support us by different ways. You can listen to us and recommend us and subscribe to us. You can also send us money. It's all on the website, and um, yeah, I'm really thankful for Harald to having been with us thank today. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah and Simon. It was nice to talk to you. Thank you. And uh, Thank you for coming. Really lovely. <laughs> Interesting talk. Remember, you have to get a good name and you're in the game. <laughs> so, see you next time. Ciao. See you. Bye-bye. 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 Good luck. Good luck. Yeah.